Hi guys, I am Nutrix and today we're talking about Arteria's pigment. Oh, actually here it is, pigment. Pigment is uh, actually now at version 2. Um, they have been, I mean they came up with pigment about a year ago and um, it's uh, a cool soft scent. Now I really enjoy what uh, Arteria is doing. Uh, they've been doing synthesizers software and hardware for a long time um, and they've been really pioneers in doing really cool emulation of analog circuitry. Uh, they were one of the first to have the uh, uh, kind of approval of uh, Bob Moog uh, when they came out with uh, emulation of the, the different Moog model in the past. Um, so they've, they've been you know doing this for a long time and I enjoy last year when I, I tested out the um, the V collection with all these you know amazing vintage synthesizers into one big package. So that's a that's a cool one. You know that's a very impressive package to get. Um, now pigment was totally different. I mean the goal of pigment is not actually pigments. There's an ass. Pigments is totally different. Um, of course there's uh, there's there's the classic vintage um, you know virtual analog circuitry you can have in it uh, and some of it actually come from a lot of history of their emulation of uh, SEM, uh, of Matrix, uh, of Moog um, so they they took these and put it in pigments but pigments open up to a lot more uh, by default you had virtual analog and you had wavetable now with version 2 you also have samples. It also does granular synthesis using your own sample. So it opens up to a lot more stuff. It is very complex and powerful, yet it's something that everybody can learn to use quite rapidly because they did an amazing job on a tutorial in this. Honestly, anybody has just the time to read and follow the instruction and click at the right place, you will get to use this synthesizer really rapidly, even if it's very capable of doing complex stuff. Um, it's very centered towards getting you to use it really rapidly and efficiently. And I'll show you, it's really cool. Okay, the cool part is the tutorial here. You have the first look, there's modulation, filter, sample, a sampler engine, granular synthesis engine, sequencer, sound design in general. So if you, let's say, let's say you wanna learn about the sampler, okay? You go next and it goes wavetable. Click on wavetable. Go to sample. You're in the sample. And then you follow the instruction. It just tells you what to do. And it's very simple. You just go through it. And honestly, that's a great job because you're in the software all the time and you see what you're doing and it's very well. And you can always go back if you forget how to use it. So that's honestly, Arturia, that's for me, that's one of the best ways for people to learn. We're at the top here. You have this section after. The second one is... Um, the, the, the bank, uh, browsing through all the sounds you have. You can use uh, filters here by type or style of, of banks. Like, I just want to see the pigments too. Um, and or clear all, then you see all the sounds. Um, what you also have, um, you can get out of this thing, you get all types. You can just filter like this. There's this a different way to go through all the sounds really rapidly. Or you just click on here and you see the list of sound and just select the ones you want. Click on it, you have it, or you just click the next one. You get synth, you got effects, and you got sequence. So there's basically three section on to use. Now, if you look at this really rapidly, you see that when I switch between synth, effects, and sequence, you basically just say, you're just changing the top half. The bottom, the mid and the bottom is not moving. Uh, because these are just different section of the synthesizer. So, uh, synth, effects, and sequence, these are kind of main section to move through. But the bottom is keyboards, uh, envelope, LFO, function, random, and combinates. These are basically all the sources of modulation, all the source of changing in real time your sound comes from what it's in the bottom. And they're basically listed here in the middle section. If you click velocity, that's with keyboard. If you want to know what these are for, because I activated this section here, which is, uh, I want to see the tips, show tips, okay? And it shows you when you move on AT, it shows you at the bottom, modulate control with the MIDI aftertouch. So AT is the aftertouch value coming from the keyboard, okay? And you have MW, MW is for a modulation wheel, 
the keyboard, the notes you're going to play. Okay, that's, I'm going to take into the sound. If you listen carefully when I press here, there's a very high pitch frequency and it comes because there's some type of loop in my USB with the controller to the laptop and I know that happens but it's not a software because if I press here I don't have it so it's really about the USB loop ground something uh, let's forget about it for now I just want to concentrate on this and I'm sorry about the shh it's actually the laptop that is really noisy because it's heating up okay so what you have here all the middle section is about sources of modulation so you've got the keyboard that is in kind of pinkish you have it here envelopes orange you have three of them the vca for the amplitude the first one envelope two which is not assigned to anything envelope three you get the lfos one and two three lfos are just really powerful what you expect the symmetry i mean there's they're really flexible in this way you can change the waveform and then you can play with the symmetry of the waveform and change with the sync and you can even play with the phase so this is really, really cool, the way it's, it's, it's really flexible. Um, you have three of them, then you get function. Function is basically, you just draw what you want, you know? You just, uh, oh, well, this is what I want, modify this, and then you can create these little, little slope of whatever you want. And this can be assigned to volume, to pitch, to, to phase, to whatever. F I mean, every knob here can be assigned and controlled from this. And that's the real, the real power of pigments because this section in the middle, it's where everything is happening. The, the link between what you have at the bottom, kind of the detail of the control and where you want to set it at the top. Uh, you have random, and actually you have three random uh, controllers. So you have these choices of uh, uh, the way it's going to be triggered. Uh, and you have the type of random, simple and hold, uh, Turing, and binary. This, I mean, the wealth of options here is, is just uh, really cool. And you can even, again, play with it, uh, change the fall. So then it's not just a simple and a hold, but the hold is simple and a hold with gliding. So again, this is not something you can do everywhere. Uh, it's because now they give you all that control. So these are the three random modulation source. And the last one is combinate. Actually, there's macros on top of that, but macros are just controllers of stuff that already exists somewhere. Uh, combinate these are basically you can combine two sources of modulation before sending it to a destination so you could combine let's say an envelope and an LFO and send it to the filter the cutoff point so you can combinate you can say well I'm going to use a uh, envelope 2 and I'm going to use the LFO uh, 1 and these two are gonna you know, they're gonna sum up or are they gonna not sum? they're gonna crossfade or are they gonna whatever you want you just assign it to the way you want and then you assign this to your destination. When you click on something, you know you're in that window, you see the information, you see, right now I'm clicking on the top of Combi and it's showing me all the destination of that modulation you know, source. If I click on it, it actually gives me the window at the bottom that I can play with. And it gives me right uh, quick access to the three functions. If I click on envelope, I've got the three envelopes. So it tries to give me always the three options into one window. Uh, if you click on the name itself, you're just seeing the destination. And if you want to modify them, you can delete them. You can click here and modify the amount. Okay. You can assign it to the macros, which you have on top here. And uh, let's get rid of that. And you can even delete them if you don't like it. So really, really quick and very graphic, very visual for the modulation part. For the, the rest of it, let's go together. I mean, you've got uh, the engines, uh, the synthesis. We'll go back and, and look in detail what it is. You've got the filters. You've got two filters. Uh, and you've got two engines. Okay. Uh, what you have after that is effects. Three buses of effects and each buses can have three effects so you have nine effects here that's what it means and there's this sequencer slash arpeggiator you can have an arpeggiator or a sequencer um, in the last section so let's go back to synth and see what it does um, the synthesizer window you've got the tuning basic stuff you've got unison control 
our classic unison, our quarter, super saw. Yeah, how many voices you want to hear. So this is the stuff you expect uh, of your synthesizer. The second section you've got, when you look at analog, you actually have control over three oscillators. So by loading analog in the engine number one, I have a classic structure of a mini Moog in a way. You have three oscillators, uh, you've got sync, uh, if you want to use sync for them, you've got FM synthesis, you have the classic oscillator, you know, sine, uh, triangular, sawtooth, and square, and the width for the... Yeah, I'm having this weird uh, sound. I'm going to try to go and initialize. Can I have just... is there an initialize sound template? Uh, triple VCO. That's it. You have this little thing here. Okay. If I click here, we can go. I have the volume for the two of them, the three of them. So, I mean, and it sounds very smooth, you know, it does what it's supposed to. Then on the second one. The last one, if you put in sine wave, you can even use it as a sub oscillator if you want to. So that's for me what you expect out of a classic virtual analog synth. So you have that part. You've got the filter section, filter, you've got the filter type, as I told you earlier, because they have a long history of making these virtual analog stuff. You have a SEM emulation, you've got the Matrix 12 from Oberheim, you have a Mini Moog. Uh, emulation. Then you've got other stuff like multi-mode, low-pass gate, surgeon. It's very precise, meaning the slope is super quick. You've got a comp filtering, you got phaser, and you got formant. So more like voice control. So all of these are uh, beyond the traditional uh, filter. And if you click, let's say, mini Moog, then you still have control over resonance, drive, and all that stuff. If you click another one, let's say Matrix 12, then you've got uh, different options for the, the low pass, the high pass, and the bend pass, and notch filter and phase. So, I mean, a lot of other option changes as you change from model to model. Uh, the SEM, you go from mode, actually it glides between mode. Let's say I'm going to move this here, we're going to see what it is. You go from a low pass to an high pass. So this is very, and it's very smooth, the way it, uh, it goes from one the other one then it turns into a band pass so very nice um, so that's for the filter you have two of them then you've got the other engine so the two engines are running in you no know, parallel then I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna analog you have wavetable now the wavetables are the one that they create um, I don't I think you actually can import uh, wavetable I'm not sure how it works I, I only had it since yesterday so um, I haven't really tested out, but uh, you can actually use these different waves. Uh, when they call building waves is that you think of them as a separate part uh, or layers of a bigger sound, or you want to have something from a synthesizer, you know, like this. Um, no. We're just listening to the wave tables, basically. original raw wave tables and if you move them that's where the wave table become fun and, and interesting is when you have control over that morphing okay well let's actually take I don't know I don't really it could be anyone let's say uh, oh there was this matrix smithalizer okay that's a cool one there, so we hear what we're doing. Okay, what's cool? It's, I mean, this is this is fun by itself. You can, I mean, then you have synthesis, but I mean, the fact that you have control like that is fun. Look at the bottom of it. You have frequency modulation, phase modulation, phase distortion, and wave folding. This is really neat. I mean, frequency modulation, it's FM synthesis. You can... Yeah, that like noisy FM. You got 
phase modulation. You go, it sounds the same. No, it's not the same. It's a different way of modulation. Uh, but that's uh, so that second one. You got phase distortion. And it's, you got still more control here. Um, I'll, I'll dig more into it and I'll come back to show you, you know, how to really use them to create these evolution of little distortion and noisy stuff in your songs. You get wave folding. That's a cool one. That's a cool one that, to have. So to have these rich digital noisy, not just noisy, just rich uh, digital sound, um, they've they've been able to do very powerful stuff with the pigments because you have you know all of these four plus you have the morphing of this thing on top uh it is just uh really really powerful to have these evolution of sound with this so really cool for that um and that's in the version two now there's still new stuff you have from wavetable you go to sample and sample, you can now load a sample. I mean, they have their own stuff. You can, I don't know, uh, let's load uh, granular friendly, what it is. Okay. Okay, you have this. So you have the sample. Right now, you only have one sample. Now, you've got at the top of the sample section, uh, you have main, edit, and map main you've got main control which basically you see the sample you actually have six windows to load samples in it you can have six sample at the same time and each of them can be used when you go in edit you can control the edit values for each of them so they can loop if you want let's say i have this one i say i want to loop but i want to loop uh, forward and backward you hear the high frequency if I go like this you hear it if I touch my keyboard my, my laptop it goes away it's really a, a ground somewhere okay so let's say I want to have this Again, you've got the, the pitch control. Um, so this this is for the loop, for this. And then if you press on B, you still have another one. You can create another one there. Then there's mapping. And that's mapping is useful when you have more than one sample. So right now, I have one sample, and it's everywhere on the key. So it's just like spread, and it goes up and down, so the speed changes. Now, you could have more than one. You can have six of them. They can be across the key. So you can have, let's say, six octave, one per octave if you want or you can have them on top of each other. Like, uh, uh, yeah, that's it, you can have like two layers. So you have key mapping. So you're gonna map them on the, over the keys. Um, uh, and you have key mapping and velocity. So you have two of them and they can be uh, velocity switching. If you go play louder than something, it actually triggers the other sound. Uh, you can sample pick. So you just sample one, you pick one and you're gonna play that one can run round robin if you have six samples they're gonna go between you're gonna play one after the other so you could let's say load uh, a hi-hat six different hi-hats and just every time you hit it's gonna play a different one whatever you know or a six different sample of us of a bass line every time you play it's a different sound of bass it could be something like that or it can be random and then it's just gonna go around uh, the sound that you have here depending on which one is as a loaded sound let's say i'm going to pick another one just so you see pick another one here and pick another one here so i've got these different sound here if i'm going to play this a different one if i go into key mapping now they're on the keys depending on which keys I'm playing. So let's go back to... Okay, I'm into that one. I'm going to the first one. Let's go back to main. 
When the cool thing here is granular. If you turn on granular, now you're gonna control, you're gonna switch from being just a sample playback to a granular. So it takes the sample, break it down into grains, and each grain has a density, a length, uh, a shape, and how many grains you're gonna have. So this here is the density, how many, how many grains you're sending. A couple of them, or many of them. The shape. Now there's a cut that is very clear. And there's a cut there, so you hear it. Oh, you want it to be smooth. And the size of each grain, you want them to be small. You want them to be long. If you have less grain, and they are small, can really create something that has nothing to do with the original sound. That's what granular can do here. So it's really, uh, really powerful. And again, if you want to play with it, go into tutorial and, and follow the, the tutorial. It's a very clearly explained how you do this. This is really fun. I, I really dig this. Um, and I'm going to try to, because you can actually go in the bottom here and import your own sounds and, you know, uh, this is too long, so I get only this. My original sound is... It's an old stuff I did back in the days. Turn it granular. There you go. And you can even play with the start, where you want to start in the song. Let's go back to just loading an analog sound so we have some, or wave table. Okay, so we have something that works here. And let's, right away, I'm just going to sign, because I find it's... I want something to move. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to... I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to assign it to... That's it. All the movement we have now. It's just these two modulation happening. I'm not even using the filter. It's pretty fun. Let's go to the sequencer. And the sequencer, there's an ARP sequencer. Uh, and you can control the octave. Control the velocity for each. gate, the length of each, trigger probability, and there's a this kind of randomizer for each of these values. You want it to glide, you want it to glide here. sequencer then what you have on top you can actually select notes uh, I'm just playing anything I don't even know let's actually pick one that was already prepared are here makes them change every time so often depending on the speed of the randomizing. So that's pretty nice because it gives you another 
kind of sequence as I go through it. And the randomize, if you look at the side here, randomize is linked to one bar. So it will only randomize every bar. So it plays a bar like with the value and then do the next one. So this is just a first look at it because honestly each of the page we can go a lot more deeper in it because it's a really powerful scent. Um, let's actually just for fun go through some of the sounds so you have an idea of what this thing can do. And that's where this thing shines. This just sounds really nice. The templates to, to, to start working with. Let's actually look at only those from Pigments 2. What's nice is right away, if you look on the size, the side, you see engine one, two, filter, you see right away the type of uh, technology they use for that sound. Like Super Jupiter. some bass. This is just massive. So that's it. I mean, um, I can play all of them, but there's a, a long list of sound that goes with it. I I think they did something really cool with pigments too, because the option of having sample you can play with granular i mean the whole package is uh, a neat powerful package and i really really dig this section here the fact that you have in the middle section all of your control uh, 
really rapidly and visually you see exactly where they are you see where they're sending you see which one is actually being used and if this one is assigned to something when i move it after and i move here it will just light this one up i know this one is assigned to that so it's really really visual really cool to use and honestly even for somebody who never got into deep editing of a synth this one is very graphic and you easily see what you're doing and what everything is connected if you're not sure what this one is connected to you click on it, it tells you what it is you know where it's connected to so that's the cool part so that's it i'm say uh, arturia keep it up i like what you do i'm going to try to figure out why i have this uh little high frequency glitch with my keyboard here a lot of new videos are coming soon because well I'm going to have more time on my hands. It's going to be Christmas. I'm going to have some time for that. And I received a lot of, of, of you know, software to test. So that's it. If, I, if you like what I'm doing, thumb up. And remember, if you like uh, Nutrix t-shirts and uh, clothing, there's a link somewhere down to actually go and look at the store on Teespring. Cheers. See you next time.